The venture business is really, a, in my opinion, a mentor kind of mentoree kind of business. You really have to learn from someone uh, who's done it before, who's been successful, who is passionate enough about what they're doing to want to teach those skills to someone else. And so for me, that was Bill Wood, um, who has a long history in Austin, co-founded Austin Ventures, co-founded Silverton Partners, which is where I work. So he was really the reason that that I moved down here and that chance to kind of do early stage investing, which I'm also passionate about with him, was a huge one we're more involved than a typical venture investor. And so we're not gonna have 50 deals in a particular fund. We're not gonna sit on 20 board seats. It's just not part of our strategy. And we have a $75 million fund. And so we'd like to return at least two to three times that fund. And we might have 15 companies. So if you just do the reverse math on that, each one of those opportunities that we invest in needs to return at least 15 to 20 or else we can't make the numbers work and so we would have to compromise the strategy and do more deals and all that sort of thing. If you look across our portfolio, a lot of it has enterprise software, some consumer oriented software, a lot of kind of traditional kind of software enabled tech. And the reason why that's the case is because Austin has a lot of great software people in identity management, which is an area that we have two investments, uh, you know, from Tivoli Systems to Waveset to the current generation of companies that we're involved with, uh, SailPoint. Uh, and Unbound ID, they have the lineage, they've done it before, um, there's the talent pool of engineers that have built those products before and you know the chances that that company is going to be successful is huge. We don't have the access to capital that Silicon Valley does, there's not 100 firms waiting to put 100 million dollars into a, a particular business idea and so we have to be more thoughtful about hey you know can we build this company to something meaningful and exciting on less capital maybe 10 million or 5 million or or 20 million, and that kind of shapes some of the opportunities that we look at. The byproduct of that, which is super exciting for entrepreneurs in Austin, is the less capital you raise, the more of the company they typically own. And so, you know, us looking for con you know capital efficient companies also promotes you know high employee ownership at the end, and it's it's a very virtuous cycle. So, one of the companies that I'm most excited about in our portfolio is a company called Sparefoot and it's in a really unsexy industry, uh, and it's in the storage industry. And not storage like, you know, more data on your disk drive, or even cloud storage, both of which are substantially more sexy than this industry. This industry is like the five by eight unit that you put your college stuff in when you move back home and need a place to store it. So they help people uh, who are looking to find a unit, find the cheapest unit, maybe they have some specifications around what it has to have, climate control, what have you, and uh, they want to basically go and book themselves into that unit and they want to do that online. Not only do they provide um, kind of the conduit between all these online shoppers that are growing every day in terms of how they find stuff in this relatively boring kind of industry that has kind of not wanted to uh, adopt technology and has kind of been drugged kicking and screaming into the digital age is they also provide a bunch of tools and software back to those facility owners to kind of help run their businesses in a digital age. So they allow them to take reservations on their own website, they allow them to uh, manage their inventory, um, and a bunch of other things that previously, you know, these guys didn't have good tools to do. And why I think it might be one of the breakout successes in Austin and perhaps nationally is, you know, the industry is super fragmented. So 85% of the industry, uh, the owners have one to two facilities. And public storage, which is the largest player in the market, has a $20 billion market cap and only owns 6% of the industry. They have all the technologies and tools that the other 85% of the market doesn't have. And if Sparefoot can empower the 85% of the market to be on a level playing field and compete with a public storage, the value that they're gonna create for those guys is gonna be immense. And hopefully, whenever you're creating and empowering that big of a market, that substantially, you can take a little piece for yourself. Um, and I think that's a huge opportunity for the company. We're gonna have some breakout stories, probably in the next three to four years here. And my hope is 
that those companies don't all sell out and get acquired because whenever you have an exciting company, of course, someone else wants to own a piece of it, that they hold out and they really build a long, sustainable growth business here that employs thousands and not hundreds. And hopefully one day, you know, they will spin out and create their own many companies that have a chance to perpetuate that cycle.